people out of place and time, witnessing moments from another era. Who are the time travelers? Welcome to Hunter Road Media. I'm author and ghost story and Mike Ricksecker. Explore with us. Throughout history, people have witnessed moments and even people that should not have been there. Clothing and personal items are from another era, whether from the past or from the future. And the only explanation seems to be that of some sort of time travel. What are these incidents? On August 10th, 1901, Eleanor Jourdain and Charlotte Annie Moberly, two middle-aged English women, were walking through the palace gardens of Versailles in France, seeking out a building called the Petit Trinon. As they searched the grounds, they suddenly noticed that the other people around them were dressed in very different clothing and looked very similar to those during the 18th century prior to the French Revolution. Specifically, they saw a man on the step of a summer house who appeared completely out of time, pockmarked with smallpox, and another woman in an 18th century gown drawing a sketch of Marie Antoinette. The two women also spotted a plow in the garden, but the gardeners at the time stated there was no longer a garden plow at Versailles, although one had been there during the reign of King Louis XVI. After the women reported their sightings, others began to come forth to report that they had also seen outdated people roaming the gardens of Versailles, including Claire M. Burrow, who claimed that she had actually walked through a gate which had been sealed up for over a century. In 1941, the South Forks Bridge in British Columbia, Canada was reopened after it had been washed away the previous year during a flood. During the festivities, a photographer captured an image of the onlookers that included a man who looked determinedly out of place. He wore a logo shirt that many believe looked silk screened, wrap around sunglasses, and he carried a small portable camera. What a time traveler may have been doing at the South Forks Bridge reopening, we have no idea, but he certainly didn't resemble people typical of that era. The photo is authentic, originating from the Braylorn Museum in central British Columbia, and suddenly went viral online in spring 2010 as part of the Virtual Museum of Canada from the Canadian Heritage Information Network. It came as a surprise to the network when there was suddenly so much interest in the photo. Skeptics against the man in question being a time traveler state the following reasons for his unusual appearance. The logo on his t-shirt resembles that of the Montreal Maroons hockey team that existed in the old NHL for 14 years from 1924 to 1938. Sunglasses with protective sides, while not widely available, did actually exist in the 1940s. And portable cameras from Kodak were also on the market in 1941, although again, they may not have been widely available. So, was this man really a time traveler randomly captured by a photographer at the South Forks Bridge? Or was he simply a man with a fashion sense ahead of his time in 1941? We may never know. It was 1935 when Air Marshal Sir Robert Victor Goddard of the British Royal Air Force may have gotten a glimpse of the future of the RAF. On a flight from Edinburgh, Scotland to Andover, England, he flew over an abandoned airfield from Drim, not long after he took off from Edinburgh. The old airfield was in complete disarray, overgrown with foliage being eaten by cattle and hangars and shambles after much disuse. Shortly thereafter, a storm whipped up and the high winds caused his plane to spiral toward the ground. Goddard pulled out of it, but then discovered that his plane was headed right back over Drim. As he flew over the airfield again, the skies opened up to bright sunshine and he could see a much different vision of the airfield. The foliage was gone and the hangars looked brand new. No longer abandoned, four planes were on the ground, three biplanes and a monoplane painted yellow. The mechanics on the ground strangely didn't notice him and they were all dressed in blue. It wouldn't be for another four years before the Royal Air Force began using a monoplane of the type Goddard spotted, started painting their planes yellow, and began dressing their mechanics in blue. In 1970, 
pilot Bruce Gernon flew into what he ended up calling an electronic fog in the Bermuda Triangle and traveled forward 30 minutes in time. Flying from Andros Island to Fort Lauderdale, a flight Gernon routinely made, massive dark clouds that formed up ahead of Gernon's plane morphed into a spiral and swallowed the craft into the vortex. The plane's instruments began malfunctioning as bright white flashes illuminated the sky. While Gernon came out on the other side unscathed, the city of Miami was below him, the plane having traveled 100 miles in only three minutes. The story of time traveler Rudolf Fintz has made the rounds, especially over the internet, for several decades. Fintz materialized in Times Square in 1950 and was immediately struck down by a car and killed, so no one ever had a chance to speak with him. His dress was that of someone in the late 19th century. His facial hair had been trimmed to button chops, and when police checked his pockets, they discovered an assortment of oddities, including coins from the 1800s, a bill from a livery stable, a brass slug good for a five-cent beer at a saloon, and a letter postmarked in Philadelphia in June 1876. Investigators researched the background of the strange man and discovered that Rudolf Fins indeed had been reported missing in 1876. As the story became more popular over the years as a legitimate occurrence of time travel, modern researchers discovered that this story was actually a piece of fiction. Originally published in the September 15, 1951 edition of Collier's, I'm Scared by Jack Finney included this segment on Rudolph Fintz. As the story spread over the years, people apparently forgot that it was just a tale and not actually true. I've included it here so that the same mistake doesn't continue to get made. It was dark and dank, the roadbed still wet with rain that had poured down for hours. A mist hung in the air, painting the aged sedan with fine droplets of water as the vehicle rambled down old Route 66. Up ahead on the right was a huddled figure in a brown trench coat and a tattered fedora trudging up the road. As the car neared, the driver determined that the figure seemed to be an older gentleman and slowed, taking pity upon the old man and offering a ride out of the horrible weather. However, when the driver pulled up, the figure disappeared into the mist. Could the appearance and disappearance of ghosts and apparitions actually be a form of time travel? Let's take a look at a couple of examples. There's a strip of historic Route 66 in Oklahoma that runs from El Reno to Weatherford which seems to be most particularly haunted. The visage of an old man on the roadside has a number of variations. As described earlier, some people have tried to offer him a ride, but he will simply vanish into thin air. One person actually enticed him into the car and described him as an eerie little man. Suddenly, the man tried to jump out of the car after it started moving, so the driver pulled over to let him out. However, the man was no longer in the car and was not spotted anywhere nearby. A few miles down the road, the driver saw the gentleman walking along the roadside the same way as he had before. Other drivers have stated the apparition jumps out into the road and they think they've hit him. However, when they get out of their cars to check, not a soul is around. Apparitions like this seem to be a glimpse of the past, our place in space and time enmeshing with another. Sometimes, the ghosts look at us as if we are the ghosts, and if this is true, then while we're receiving a glimpse of the past, these souls from the past are receiving a glimpse of the future. A personal experience that I had that could possibly be a time travel type of experience, or possibly a time overlap experience, was an encounter I had with a shadow person at a restaurant called Johnny V's in Muskogee, Oklahoma. We were just finishing up a paranormal investigation. A couple of people were upstairs in the bar area, some others were out in the restaurant area, and I decided to take a last photo sweep of the restaurant. As I was walking through the main doors to the kitchen of the restaurant, I suddenly spotted a shadow that darted across the kitchen really quick and slammed through the side door of that kitchen and into the restaurant. It was a very fast, very translucent shadow, but it was distinctly there and you heard the bang of the door when it slammed into it. What's unusual about this is that 
Even though I heard the slam of that door, it was just a flimsy little metal door that you could open very easily with your finger, meant for waiters and waitresses to walk through with heavy trays of food, the door didn't open. I called out to the others to see if they had heard what I had, and they had. And I do have a theory on this, that this shadow person was some sort of interdimensional being, for some reason crossing my plane of existence at that particular time, and that when I walked into the room, it saw me, I scared it, and it ran through that door. Now, perhaps on its plane of existence, that door opened wide and it ran right off into the dining room. But on my plane of existence, that door stayed closed. But sound being on a different wavelength resonated between the two planes of existence. While this could purely be an interdimensional being like I described, could this also have been someone else from the building's history? Our moments in time overlapping each other for a brief moment. It certainly could have been an example of real time travel. And for more videos about supernatural encounters, please take a look at our other videos off on the side. I'm Mike Bricksecker. Until next time.